What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see you again. We hope you guys are having a good day. Boy oh boy do we have another juicy video for you guys today. Because this guy is the youngest son of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, the founders of the notorious Sinaloa cartel. Imagine what it would be like to be the son of one of the most wanted men on the planet. Got your curiosity peaked? Wait no further and let's get right into the video to quench that curiosity. Oh, if you find the video interesting, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Serafin Zambada Ortiz is a convicted illegal substance trafficker and one of the high-ranking members of the Sinaloa cartel. He was born on 27th May 1990 in San Diego, California, United States. Isn't life already hard enough for everyone? But imagine being born to not only one of the wealthiest men on the planet, but also to one that's being hunted by law enforcement worldwide. His life has both good and bad shares of experiences. Serafin Zambada grew up with a golden spoon in his mouth, a life filled with luxuries one can't even imagine. It must be awesome, right? Well, not really. When your father is being hunted by both the law enforcement and also rivals, do you think life would not be without its challenges? Believe me when I say this guy really had to get through some messed up stuff. Serafin had his first taste of the consequences of being in a criminal family at the young age of two. After the capture of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo by law enforcement, war broke out between the Arellano Felix organization and the Sinaloa cartel over control of Tijuana. This turned one's friends to cold-hearted rivals. All of them turned against each other and blood began to shed. Serafin Zambada also had his fair share in all this. As mentioned earlier, on the day he became two, a car exploded just outside his birthday party. Not only that, when he was just nine, gunmen stormed into a Mazatlan hotel room, from which Serafin and his mother had left moments earlier. The ruthless cartel rivals did not even hesitate to target a two-year-old baby and his mother. As they did not find the intended targets, they killed his grandparents, his uncle, and his aunt. His mother's side of the family were killed one by one. Even though this is to be expected when your dad is one of the biggest drug kingpins to ever exist, I just wonder how harsh it must be to lose your loved ones one by one at such an age. This constant atmosphere of threat kept Serafin indoors mostly. Under the watchful eye of his mother, they moved from place to place for safety. Serafin, his mother, and his sister moved from Arizona and Sinaloa back and forth amidst the turf wars. Serafin wrote about his upbringings as living in a golden cage filled with useless luxuries. But despite giving her best to keep her children away from the path of their father by being in the US, their visas expired and eventually had to return to Sinaloa. He was doing his degree in agronomy at the Universidad Autónoma de Sinaloa when he too made his first step into what his father did. He also got married to Karime Torres Acosta at the age of 20. Karime was the daughter of Manuel Torres Felix, another former Sinaloa cartel drug lord and one of the most faithful hitmen of El Chapo, Guzman. He was a married man in his early 20s, taking baby steps into a criminal life. Serafin and Karima had two children later. Serafin soon started to climb the ranks of the cartel hierarchy. Being the son of El Mayo helped to accelerate his growth. Within no time, he became in charge of the division of the cartel which trafficked illicit substances to San Diego. Money and status came his way. Serafin was someone who wanted to let others know what he was up to. He frequently flaunted his wealth and luxuries through his social media and he only realized later that it was something which got him into trouble in the first place. Photos of jewelry, gold-plated weapons, exotic animals, luxurious cars, designer clothes were posted through his Instagram and Twitter handles. All rich stubborn kids are the same, aren't they? Even a narco corrido song was written about him. It mentions him as someone who loves women, weapons, and extremely loyal. In September 2013, Serafin was charged with conspiracy to traffic illegal substances from Mexico to the United States through a California grand jury indictment. In November that year, while Serafin and his wife were crossing the international border to the US, they were captured by federal agents of the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA. While his wife was released, he was sent to a prison in Tucson, Arizona. So by the time he was 23, he was already in jail. Although he initially pleaded that he was not guilty of the charges against him in court, he was overwhelmed by the amount of evidence against him. That oversharing habit of his came back to bite him in the back. It was also revealed that law enforcement also had wiretaps against him. 
conspiring to transport illegal narcotic substances from Mexico into the U.S. On 26 September 2014, Serafin pleaded guilty to conspiring to buy a huge amount of narcotic substances. The San Diego court sentenced Serafin Zambada to 66 months in prison. He wrote to the judge about his past upbringing and how he realized his actions have caused harm to other people. He expressed his remorse through the letters. He also told the judge that he learned that in the narcotics business, one tends to hurt a lot of people and he regrets being the cause of harm for so many people. He also described his life as living in a golden cage in these letters. He said in Sinaloa, there wasn't much to do except to get into the narcotics business. Something interesting about his trial is that, while his crimes are significant in nature, which usually results in facing a minimum of 10 years in jail and a hefty fine, Serafin Zambada was left off with just five and a half years of sentence. The court reasoned that such a sentence was given after taking into consideration his young age and his genuine remorse. His lack of violence in his criminal career was also noted by the judge. The letters written by his family and friends, who described him as a kind and helpful person, also helped to reduce his sentence. The guy had received more luck too. Even though he received a sentence of 66 months, he got out of jail after serving 58 months. He was released in September 2018. He was able to get an early release because of his good conduct and also because of the letters written by his mother to the prosecution asking for a lighter sentence. It is not known if Serafin Zambada was able to strike a deal with the prosecution for a reduced sentence. His indictment details of the case were never released to the public and still remained sealed. Who knows, maybe the guy might have ratted out one or two of his business partners. As the capture of the son of the one and only Ismael El Mayo Zambada is not something which happens every day, Serafin Zambada became a critical link to the series of major crackdown on narcotics in the US and Mexico. His hearing was a significant closure to one of the long-running chapters of ongoing feud between the authorities and the Sinaloa cartel. Details about his whereabouts after his release is still not known and since he's still a US citizen, he would not be deported. But he might have left for Mexico willingly. His father still remains a highly wanted fugitive, along with his two brothers. Some truths about the history of his family were actually known to the public through the letters written by Serafin Zambada. In the end, it appears as if Serafin Zambada actually changed and he repent the things he did in the past. It was reported while he was in prison that he actually wanted to finish his schooling to obtain a college degree. After this, he wanted to help his mother with her farms and finally be a proper husband to his wife and a father to his two children. News about him might surface on the internet in the near future. Who knows? And let's just hope that it's good news. So, what do you guys think about the life of Serafin Zambada Ortiz? Do you guys believe that he deserves a second chance? That he really regrets what he had done in the past? Or do you guys believe that he will go back to dealing narcotics like his father and his brothers? It is true that considering other drug lords, Serafin Zambada is way better than most of them. He might be a criminal and a little spoiled, but comparing the ruthless acts of other cartel members and leaders, which resulted in a huge number of loss of lives, Serafin Zambada is only taking baby steps. Anyways, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments if you think he has really changed. It's time to end the video, folks. Please let us know if you liked the video. Give the video a like if you want more content like this. Subscribing to the channel also helps us a lot. Do remember to share the video with your friends to let them know about the life of the youngest son of El Mayo. Let's meet in another video and until then, stay hydrated and stay safe.